Good morning. Um, I'm just going to bring you up to date of where we are uh, in the church and where we might be with opening up worship services. It looks like right at this moment, a with uh, consulting with the session and also with Dr. Bob McClure, that we should be able to have live worship services the last Sunday of this month, the last Sunday of May, we should be having uh, worship services in the sanctuary with precautions. And we will be letting everybody know what those precautions are uh, in the near future. I want to take today to read from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, beginning with the 12th verse. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you, may, you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen and amen. I believe it was a comic book before it became a television series. And I know it was a television series before it became a movie. It was about a mild-mannered scientist who inadvertently infected himself with some kind of gamma rays. And the scientist himself, the man himself, was still mild-mannered until somebody made him angry. And when he became angry, the man grew into a green monster, which went by the name the Hulk. Now, dual natures and inside of one person is kind of the making of science fiction, it sounds like it anyway, science fiction TV shows and science fiction movies. But the truth of the matter is, in Scripture, it tells us that we can easily be caught in dual natures in our own lives. There is the idea that we as human beings have both good and bad in each of us, or at least the possibilities of each. So it made me begin to wonder as I was thinking about all this, could it be that every one of us has a little David Banyan and a little Hulk inside every one of us? Colossians. In the book of Colossians, especially what we read, teaches us the same thing. Colossians 3, 5, if we go back and, and read that part, Paul writes, Put to death what is earthly in you. Put to death what is earthly in you. And then he, Paul goes on to write some of those things that we need to put to death inside of us. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self and its practices. And put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and in the image of God himself. Take off the old self, Paul says. Take off that sinful nature and put on the new self as a follower of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 12, Paul says, says to all of us, put on compassionate hearts. Put on kindness, put on humility, put on meekness, put on forgiveness and patience. Forgive one another as the Lord has forgiven you. And then he goes on in verse 14 and he says, Above all these, put on love. Don't you love that? Put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Take off the old self and put on the very nature of of Jesus. So how's that accomplished? How do we how do we do that? How do we take off the old self? How do we put on the new? Paul spells out some uh, some steps and 
in the next few verses from Colossians chapter 3, verses 15, 16, and 17. Verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, and indeed you were called to one body. And be thankful. Be thankful. How do we put on that new self? How do we put on Christ? If we put on Christ, then we will find peace in our hearts. Not the kind of peace that the world offers. Not the kind of peace that people talk about all the time. It is the ultimate unconditional peace. That no matter what the circumstances around us, we have peace in our hearts. I found an app on my phone, and, and, and I, I put it on my phone just kind of for fun, but it's kind of interesting within itself. It's called a Relax Meditation. A Relax Meditation. And if you can compose several sounds, uh, bind, bound together, if you will, birds, rivers, rain, oceans, white noise, and a one that's called Eternity, which has a sound all its own. And all of these sounds can be combined together, or at least one at a time, whichever one you want to do. And it's supposed to help you relax as you listen. It is to put off the old thoughts inside of our heads and put on new ones. It's to put away the, the, the thoughts that are keeping us awake and reminding us that there are gentle thoughts out there. And there are actually, there's actually a part of the meditations where uh, you, you follow a woman's voice. Patricia says it's a really creepy part of it, and I agree. It all sounds soothing, and it all sounds relaxing until you hear that creepy voice of that woman. True and lasting peace comes to our hearts, not by the way of an app, or a generated voice of a lady. It comes to our hearts when Christ rules in our hearts and in our lives. In verse 16, we find another step. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, how do we do that? How do we do that one? Allow the word of Christ, allow the scriptures, all the things that Jesus said, dwell in us richly. It's not enough to pick up the Bible and scan through the Bible and open it for ourselves and then just kind of look at it a little bit or open up our Bible app on our phones or our, or our tablets or whatever we have. It's not enough just to do that. We must open up the Word of God. Read for ourselves the Word of God, that He is revealing Christ through the Holy Spirit. It's not enough to pick up the Bible and scan through it. We have to open it up for ourselves. We have to open up the Word of God through Jesus Christ revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Just like we have been unable to have church and worship service, we have also been unable to have one of my favorite things, which is Bible studies. I really miss our Bible studies. Because Bible studies require that we dig deeper into the Word of God. It helps us to know God's plan for us. And in knowing God's plan for us, then we can start to find peace. Just knowing through the Word of God that God has a plan for me. And that brings some measure of peace to my life. Once we study the Word of God and let it dwell in us, then we can let the, the, the Word of Christ take residence in our lives. Don't just let the Word become a temporary tenant. Let it move in. Let it move all over our lives. Let it move all over our hearts. And in verse 17, And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That simply means to put on the very nature of Christ, to allow Jesus to make us new and, we, and everything that we do, we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do, we do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are a new creation in Christ, 
through the Holy Spirit, then it begins to flow out of us and into the lives of others. And if Jesus lives in us and through us, then the, the nature, the natural response of that is to, to give thanks. We give thanks. As Paul says, we give thanks to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Dual natures inside of us, like David Bannon and, and the Hulk. We have two natures inside of us. One is a nature that draws us to sin. And this nature has a big mouth. It has a loud mouth. But the second nature is the nature that God places in us. It's the nature to be like Jesus. It's the nature to live like Jesus and with Jesus. And it's to be the person that God calls us to be. Someone once said, the surest sign of carrying a bucket full of water is wet feet. Someone said, let me say that again, the surest sign of carrying a bucket full of water is wet feet. When we let Jesus overflow in our lives, we will have wet feet and people will notice it. Amen. Father, thank you for your word which teaches us that we are to be like Christ, we are to live like Christ, we are to be one in Christ. Remind us through the words of Paul that we need to put off the old self and put on the new self, which is Christ. Help us to understand that a little better and how we might be able to do it. We thank you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.